right so we are here at the department of mathematics at the university of ghana with dr mcintyre the head of the math department and um, she has retired two years ago but she's still here with us and um, um, last week we had a, a surprise party for her um, she has served ghana well she has been in ghana for almost 20 years and um, she's finally going to her country and then we are here for an interview a quick interview with her okay so you're welcome to jhcampus.com thank you please um i've already mentioned your name but uh, take this opportunity to introduce yourself to our readers okay so i'm margaret mcintyre i've been here in the university of ghana department of mathematics teaching since january 1998 coming from Australia. Um, so, if I may ask, um, what brought you to Africa I mean, and, and, and Ghana? Uh, okay, so when I was finishing my PhD, it was a time in Australia when uh, finances to universities were being cut and we were being told that there wouldn't be jobs in the departments of mathematics for some time. Some places said up to 10 years. And me, I was already old when I did my PhD, so I couldn't be waiting 10 years for a post somewhere. So during the course of my PhD, I'd met well, many other PhD students, but in particular, one Canaan who was doing a PhD in agriculture, well, bacteriology, in fact. And he said to me, we need mathematicians at the University of Ghana. We don't have any mathematics department is dying. Why don't you apply? So I said, okay. So I applied. Then they accepted and offered me an appointment. And I came. <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, your decision to come to Africa or Ghana, how did your family take it? Um, okay, well, you know, I was an adult. By the time I got here, um, um, how old am I now? I, yeah, well, what, in my 40s. Okay. So I was really sort of like independent. Uh, I don't think anybody was too concerned about it. They realised that what I wanted to do was get a job as a lecturer um, and I was being offered one in Ghana so that's that's sort of like how it went. All right, um, you, are, you are lecturing in mathematics and uh, it's a field that a lot of people, especially women, uh, get scared to get into and um, what's your motivation to choose a career in mathematics? Um, this one is sort of like difficult because I, mathematics is always the subject I loved right from the beginning, right from the beginning of my schooling. It was the thing that I would do over and over and over and I could do all day and every day and never stop. But when I went to university, um, so the plan was to do mathematics and physics. The first university I went to, I got turned off mathematics completely in the first year. It was just a tedious repetition of what we'd done in the secondary school. And so, and I, at the same time, I'd never done biology, didn't do biology at all in the secondary school. And um, first year, in any science degree in those days, you did all of the subjects. You did biology, chemistry, physics, math, right? Everybody started with everything. Um, so now I had biology. This was something new and exciting to me. So that's what I pursued in my first degree. Um, then after a few years working as labor in laboratories and things like that, um, I decided that I really did want to get back to the math somehow. And I started by doing a diploma of education, primary school teaching. And, and well, again, there didn't seem to be much happening in, as far as employment. 
Um, those days, they weren't so keen to employ people with degrees in the primary schools. I'm not too sure why, but this sort of, it worked against me, in fact, having a degree. So I didn't get primary school posting. Um, so then I answered a newspaper advertisement for a secondary school math teacher, even though I hadn't done my first degree in math. They gave it to me and I stayed in that school for six or seven years. And during the course of that time, I started to, I went back and started to do the maths again, the under, undergraduate maths. So I went through all of that. I applied for study leave several times, but they wouldn't give it to me. Um, so I just kept trying to do it sort of like, you know, in the times that you get out of school. And eventually I got to the end of that. And I had, well, they, they awarded me the, what they called the Meyer Medal. And this was um, a prize for the sort of like um, the best, uh, what do you call it, honours result. And this was in mathematics. So then they said, people encouraged me then to continue, to continue into the masters. I did one year masters and then they said, ah, but now this is looking like a PhD. So why don't we just continue <laughs> and do the PhD? So it was like that. It just sort of like, um, it was something I'd always wanted to do anyway. Somehow I had got distracted in the earlier years, but then came back to. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that has been your journey so far. And uh, uh, having, taught, having taught in Ghana for about 20 years now. What's your assessment of how mathematics is being taught in Ghana? How frank can I be? Yes, as, as, as you can be. Oh. Okay, I'm, I'm afraid. I'm afraid the way math is taught. It's, um, students seem to get the idea that it's all about memory. Memorize this, memorize that, memorize something else. In my mind, well, what I know for sure is if mathematics was anything about memorizing, I would never have been able to do it. <laughs> so it's not about memory. It's about understanding. It's about, you know, grabbing the concept and, and having a picture in your head about what it means. And then it's logic. It's just logical argument. It's honesty. That's the other thing I love about mathematics. You can't do mathematics dishonestly. Okay. That's, 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 that's nice to hear. That's nice to hear. And um, what about your assessments of Ghanaian students? You have trained so many of them. What's your yeah. assessment of I, I've had some brilliant students. And really, to, to, to tell you the truth, right in the beginning, when things were a little bit difficult, the salary was a bit low and would run out after the first couple of weeks, and um, the electricity would be off all the time, and there was problems with water supply, and it really wasn't very comfortable. But the thing that kept me here was how enthusiastic the students were to learn. You know, in the, in the very first semester I was here, I had an evening class down in that room 05. And so you know that in that room, as the evening comes in, the room darkens quite, quite seriously. And there would be no light. The light would, go, would have gone off and we start lectures at 5.30 and you know that by 6 o'clock you almost can't see. So I'd sort of like, I'd start by working on all of the, the board at the front. We had blackboards as well. Okay. Blackboards in the dark, <laughs> not whiteboards. And um, so you'd find sort of by six o'clock, I could only use half of the board because the other board was in blackness. And then by the time it's half past six, I'm sort of like using the one third of the half of the board. And I'm saying to the students, can you people really see? And I go, yes, continue, continue, keep going. They didn't want me to stop just because it was dark. Yeah. That's what it was like in those days. Yes. Yes, yes, yeah. And, um, you know, and you have trained a lot of students. Some have 
some are some are doing well in their field. Some have turned department heads even at the University of Ghana. Um, the example is Dr. Doko, who is the uh, head of statistics department. And I want to find out from you, how do you feel when um, you see students you've trained, students you've inspired in the field of mathematics walk up to you and say, thank you, madam, uh, you, were, you were their lecturer. And uh, how do you feel? How do you feel about it? It's a reward. It's a reward, yes. It's lovely. Hmm. So, but what do you tell your continuing students, a student that you've taught before, and students that you're still teaching? Um, what's your message to them? Hmm. I think the, the most important thing is to understand that mathematics is not about memorizing. And this is something you need to tell the students that you're going to teach and the, let them tell the students that they're going to teach. Because there isn't just one way of answering. You know, so many times I'm listening to people teaching mathematics and it's like they say, when you see this, do this. And I think to myself, how can you learn mathematics like that? This is not. This is not mathematics. This is like recipes. <laughs> mathematics is not about recipes. Uh, it's about understanding the thing that you're trying to do. And then the, there can be many, many different ways to answer the problem that's in front of you. And so you should be open to sort of like um, explore all the possibilities. And um, uh, you, you earlier told us that um, you came to Ghana on an invitation from um, a Ghanaian who was studying in your country. And um, uh, I, I suppose he, he became your family. Yes. And uh, can you tell us a bit about your family? <laughs> um, that's all there is to tell about the family. <laughs> that is all there is. There are no children. I was old. So I didn't have much time left for that sort of thing. So, yes, that's about all there is to tell about family. I have, of course, um, adopted families, if you like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell us their names. Their names? Um, so we have um, the Agbadazi family, Sogokope. Um, and we have the Jikunu family. Mm -hmm. um, I realize that you are so unique. You, you wear African prints. I mean, almost every time. I've never seen you in any other print than African prints. Um, I, I can see you, you really love African prints, don't you? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Or is it because you are in Ghana, in Africa? Well, that certainly, because it's available here. If I had stayed in Australia, I would never have seen it. It would never have been available, you see. When I came here, I think I, I, think I wore jeans and T-shirt for the first couple of semesters because they were the clothes I had. And then as those clothes wore out, they got replaced with these clothes. Okay, so uh, when you came, did you ever have um, had a chance to go back to Australia for a holiday or for... Um... Yes. The university has a policy whereby um, expatriate lecturers get a chance, they call it a home leave. Um, depending upon how far away your home country is, um, so because Australia is far, mine was... Um, settled it once every four years. And so I have been home once every four years. Yes. So I guess it's about five times. Yes. Yeah. Um, and talking about your uniqueness, um, when I was coming, I saw your card there. Uh, it's, it's so unique. Yes. It's so unique and uh, beautiful car. Yes. How long have you had it? Oh, this was Agbadazi's car. He bought it new. Um, when he was in Japan, he did a master's in Japan before he came to Australia for the PhD. This was, an, it's a 1985 um, 
Mitsubishi. What do you call the thing? What's the style? I've forgotten. Lancer. Uh huh. And you still keep in it. <laughs> yes. Oh, in 1985. This is a strong car. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and it's so easy to work on. I, I don't like these modern cars with all their silly things. This is just a simple motor that even I can understand how it works and I can hear when things go wrong and I know what to do, mostly. <laughs> okay, so when are you going back to Nigeria, uh, to Australia? For so I'm sort of planning September. Mm. And you'll never come to Ghana again? Or? Oh, no, of course not. I would, once I figure out how to live in Australia, in my poverty, I'll um, figure out how to get back to Ghana. <laughs> yes. Um, Ghana is a family. Yes. Yeah. So we have a family in Ghana here. Yeah. Yes. And uh, we are Ghanaian by, by, by marriage. <laughs> right. Yes. Okay, so um, give us your final words to um, young girls, uh, females who uh, are in secondary schools, um, who thought that you know, mathematics is for the guys. Mathematics is so difficult to understand. So I think I want to say mathematics is one of the few subjects that you study that is actually made by man. Biology is God made, or something. Chemistry is God made somehow. Mathematics, man made. If man made, man can understand. What one man made, another man can understand. So everybody should be able to understand math. It's understanding. It's not trying to memorize. I think it's the style of learning, understanding what mathematics is and, and enjoying it. Before we wrap up, I would like to know how you felt at the party, the surprise <laughs> party that was organized for you. Because oh, I understand you you were not you had you had no clue about I had no it. I knew about it, and I was shocked. I was shocked to see such a smorgasbord of people from my background, oh, from my twenty years. So many different people from different connections and whatnot, all being together. Yeah. Professor uh, Aluti was there. Yes. I did in few Yes. Yes. It was great. It was terrific. They did a terrific job. Yeah. 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 Mm. Okay. So uh, thank you so much for having us, and uh, we wish you all the best, madam. Thank you. Thank you.